Um, I agree 100 percent that uh, you know I'm a proponent for nuclear energy, and I believe that it, we, it's important. The only way we're going to maintain a safe and reliable energy grid, emission free, is to involve nuclear technology. I still think it was a big mistake to close down Indian Point, uh, which pro pro provided 2,000 megawatts of uh, power, clean energy, to New York City. Um, and then, obviously, as we move forward, you know, nuclear technology has to be a part of our future. Uh, I know this. Uh, Richard Dewey talked about this in comments he's made in the past, and he's also talked about dispatchable resources, emission-free resources, to meet our reliability gaps that we have. He's mentioned advanced nuclear in some of his comments. I know that's been an issue that's come up. Where do we stand from your perspective in uh, the advanced nuclear designs as far as being able to utilize that in the future? How far are we away from that? Uh, and shouldn't that be it's certainly part of the discussion? as we move forward for our, towards our clean energy goals and, and the importance of nuclear from not just a clean perspective, but a reliable perspective. Where do we stand with that? And also, is that something we as legislators could visit and see where things are in that process? Because that's, that's an important part of this component. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on where we stand on the advanced uh, nuclear technology so we can meet this uh, goals in the future. Well, well, I agree with you um, and, uh, you know, Today we talked, the entire discussion was about renew renewables, but the CLCPA calls for a carbon-free grid by the year 2040. It has, it has only, as far as renewables goes, it only has one requirement, which is an interim goal in the year 2030 of 70% renewables. Before that, you don't have to have 70% renewables, and after that, you don't have to have 70% renewables. But you do have to have a carbon-free grid by the year 2040. And the issue, like is, I think has been said by Eric and some other folks, is that as you try to put more and more intermittent wind and solar on the grid, uh, you, you run into the system level problems of, of, of transmission and intermittency, the curtailment, storage needs, and so forth. And, and so you're stuck where, where you just don't get there. And, um, and so it is going to be important to have nuclear as part of the picture. I completely agree with you on that. And but to answer your question, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's some great things uh, coming down the pipe. There's, there's technologies um, uh, that are likely to emerge, I would say, in the 2030 timeframe, probably as, 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 widespread, as widespread availability. Um, you've got, um, you've got uh, the new scale, which right now is uh, – Developing a, its its small modular reactors about seventy seven megawatts on on at Idaho National National Labs. Um, you have the natrium reactor, which Bill Gates is working on, um, uh, being built with cooperation with the Department of Energy in Wyoming. Um, and the great thing about that one is that it actually is going to be built at the site of a former coal plant that's going to be shut down, and so it's going to be replacing dirty energy with clean energy. So, not to like about that. So um, there, there, there are, uh, you know, I, could, I can name some other technologies that are out there too, but I think, um, you know, I think it's going to be in that 2030 time frame where that's really going to come to fruition, but we just need to start planning for that now. And so that's my concern is that we're going to do it. We're going to rush toward this renewable goal and then we're going to get stuck. You know, I mean, right now, before closing Indian Point, we had uh, about half of our electricity, over half of our electricity was already carbon free. Um, so if we find ourselves in the year 2030, and we say we even we get to the 2030 uh, goal of 70% renewables, so then it went from 50 per, over 50% renewables to just about 70% renewables. That's not a big increase, actually. We haven't done that whole that much, and then we're stuck. Uh, where how do we go the rest of the way? So um, so yeah, I think I think nuclear definitely needs to be part of the plan, and we should be planning for it now. Just to jump in um, uh, and pivot it off, Keith, uh, when you consider that the deadliest form of pollution globally is air pollution from fossil fuels burned that people breathe into their lungs, we think that nuclear, whether old or new, has a stellar record. It's been around supplying zero emission electricity on a grid for over 60 years. It now exists in over 400 reactors all around the world in over 30 different countries in diverse climates from Canada, China, South Korea. Uh, we uh, are uh, ultimately just enthusiastic about the, the harnessing of nuclear fission to displace fossil fuels. Uh, new reactors have made great advances, just like in any other industry. Um, but uh, we don't think that there's such a great distinction between old and new. It's all great. Thank 